And we're back on Backstory with our uh, guest, PA announcer for the Philadelphia Flyers, New Lou Nolan. Lou, you got so many stories, uh, and that's why we love doing this show, because guys like you that give us some um, information and, and, and uh, some good humor when we need it a lot of times, um, and a very tough job. Uh, you're, you're doing the NHL. Um, you have a lot of homework to do as far as player announcements and things like that. You're probably best known for the Pico power play, but I'm not going to ask you to do that here. Okay. But if the if the the fan of today is at a Flyers game, they need to know that Lou Nolan is the guy that you're. The Flyers are going on the Pico power play, and you stretch that out. Yeah, it's funny. You know, uh, I I've always not preferred to be a cheerleader. Yeah. And when it first came up, they said, "Hey, we're going to do this new thing before the power plays are going to be called the Pico power play." So the first one was like. And they're going to the Pico power play. And they said, give us a little juice, you know. <laughs> Second game was a was little bit more, a little bit more. And uh, now it's uh, sort of grown to it's got its own life. People get riled up when we go on the power play. There's no question about it. I don't hear it, but uh, people yeah. repeat it. You know, if I walk through the on the way to where I sit, I'll go through the concourse and people will, will stop me and say, through little kids, he said, this is Lou Nolan, he's the PA guy. And they look at me and they go, oh. And then he says, he's the Pico power play guy. And then they go, oh. <laughs> I know so, you are now. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, uh, that seems to be the way it's going. So uh, uh, doing the PA announcing, I would imagine back then, and, and we have it now where, you know, the, uh, the bench is empty and the goalies come out and they hold each other off. But I would imagine that's a nightmare back in the old days, maybe and today, of sorting those names out and who's getting the penalties and, uh -huh. and how they ma – and who, who takes care of that information and puts it up on the board and, and figures out all the running times and things like that? Well, in the early days, I'll tell you an early days story. Um, again, without class, Bob Myers is the ref, and there's a brawl. And uh, Freddie sends – Freddie Shiro sends Kelly over. He bangs a couple guys. They're going to start a fight. Bench is empty. Guys square off all over the place. Now the referee, there was only one ref then. There weren't two refs. Okay. He's got to figure it all out. So Myers comes over to me and says, give me some paper, Lou. Give him paper and a pencil. He's out there, and he's jotting down doing this and doing that. Now it it's, it's, takes an inordinate amount of time for them to clear the ice. Right. And he comes over to me, and he gets set and ready to give me the, the, the penalties. And my phone rings. And I say, yes. Lou, this is Ed Snyder. I said, hello, Ed. Could you hold him for a minute, please? <laughs> So I put the phone down. I take the penalties from the ref. I get them all down. I go back to the phone. I say, yes, Ed. He says, Lou, he says, something you and I got to get straight. <laughs> so between us, this is a great story we all laugh about all the time. When I call you, I want the referee put on hold. <laughs> <laughs> so, From the years you've been doing this, how has hockey changed from the years that we were just talking about, the Broad Street Bullies and the Brad Park years and Ed Jockerman, Ken Dryden to today, and even through Hexie's. Um, lifetime, and now he's in the front office, obviously. How have the Flyers changed? How has hockey changed, from your view, from where you're at? I think that the game has gotten a lot faster, obviously. Uh, if you see an old game from years gone by, first thing you notice is that the teams look like they're very slow. Mm -hmm. Second thing you notice is there's no ads on the boards or okay. nothing on the ice. Okay. And you say, geez, look how – God, that looks strange, you know. It's like just white. Um, but it is a lot faster. The puck moves a lot quicker, moves player to player, player to player, so much faster. Right. Um, there is not as much um, rough and tumble stuff. There are still players like our Ryan White who uh, will hit 10 guys, have 10 hits in a game. <laughs> you know, the guy's great. Um, Wayne Simmons hits guys. Um uh, but it's different. The game was a lot n nastier. Mm -hmm. It gets nasty at times now, but yeah. it doesn't start nasty. And that has to do with the, uh, the way that the, the refereeing has been crafted, so to speak, with referees, what right. they want to call and not call. Right. Uh, but um, it's, it's just generally a, um, a different game nowadays. Mm -hmm. Do I like it as much? Sure. Yeah. I still like it. Yeah. You know, I love the game. Uh, grown up with a lot of it, done thousands of games. But um, it, it's different in that it's not as rough and tumble. You know, Philadelphia fans like the rough and tumble, Absolutely. as you well know. So when, when something's going to happen or when somebody looks like they're going to drop gloves, they're most excited. That's just us. That's Philly. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, I don't want to see it out of the game because yeah. people say, oh, the fighting should be out of the game. Well, not really. <laughs> there needs to be a way for players who are so to frustrated. To express themselves? To express themselves. Yeah, right, you got exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. You got it. Do you have a favorite Philadelphia Flyer moment? Uh, last minute of play in the third period on May 19th, 1974. Stanford First Cup. Cup. First Cup. And nothing's compared Shivering to Shivering, Well, the second cup it. is nice, too. But that was away. That it was, was a Buffalo. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So that was your, your probably your most memorable moment in Flyers history. Yeah. You know, when, when we scored the, the first goal, when McLeish uh, tipped in DuPont's shot, I guess it was, right in front. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know that was the way the game was going to end. So that, that felt good. Yeah. You know? But it wasn't the same as knowing, hey, we almost have this. And Orr was in the box with a penalty, if yeah. you recall. He tripped Clark. And uh, right at the you end, you got a better so, memory than I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, so uh, yeah, I'll never forget it. Well, speaking of Rick McLeish, you and he are going into the Philadelphia mm -hmm. Sports Hall of Fame this year. Yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be good. Uh, it's uh, it's a real honor for me uh, to be uh, thought of like that. I yeah. mean, um, you know, and, and and for Ricky too. I know uh, it's um, you know you think about it, who's there ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the who's who of Philadelphia sports. Sure. I mean, and, and I'm going in with Dick Vermeil. Yeah, you know? another one. Yes. Gary Maddox. Yes. I mean, uh, Lou Nolan with those guys. Absolutely. I'm the no kid from South, Southwest Philly, you know, that plays street hockey. It's, uh, it's a real honor. I can't tell you how I feel about it. It's well, I don't amazing. think you have to be actually on the ice or on the field uh, to do a fantastic job, which you do. And uh, – we appreciate you so much in Philadelphia for the way you announce the games. Uh, you fire up the crowd. You're part of the Flyers' legacy. And uh, we appreciate you coming on the show and talking about your, your, your story. Well, I thank you for all those compliments. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here uh, and uh, uh, look forward to more great years and having more fun at it. Okay. Hope we get another Stanley Cup soon. I'm, I'm with that. Okay. For Chuck Bushbeck, for Lou Nolan, my guest, this is Backstory, and uh, we'll see you next week.